if I could go back in time and I could have someone like what I'm trying to be, I'm doing my best to be the very thing that I was wanting to be, or not wanting to be, but wanting to learn from someone that had the experience, had gone through the pain, suffered, lost real money, and then found a way to make money. That's somebody that I would have completely subscribed to, absolutely took everything they would have said to heart. And that's my motivation in doing all this stuff. Because if I can save one of you from putting yourself through what I put myself through, then it's a success for me. But it's almost like a confessional too, because you know a lot of you look up to me as like this superhero kind of guy. And you, you view me as something that I'm not. I'm, I'm not like what many of you attribute characteristics like it's undeserved i'm an average little person okay i'm not really a big deal i came from a small town and i was fortunate to find my way in certain circumstances certain chance meetings and i've been blessed by a really big god and that's who's behind me that's that's where i get the tenacity to stay with it and that's who kept me going when i didn't have an ict encouraging me it would have been great for me to have somebody to sit down like this and kind of like, just talk, just talk to me, be a friend, be someone to encourage me because I was in tears just about every other day back in the nineties. I was so frustrated. I used to work and I'm thinking about it right now as I'm driving on Saturdays, I would get up real early and I used to do a vending route for a guy out in uh, Owings Mills, Maryland. And I didn't make very much money, and you've all heard this story before, but I had to go service a nursing home on, I can't remember the name of the road, <laughs> it'll come to me, Fayette Street, downtown in Baltimore. Not a really good neighborhood, and I was always wondering if I was going to get robbed, but I never did. But I spent five hours of my Saturday as a young man just turning uh, 20 years old, freshly uh, divorced. And I uh, would waste five hours of my Saturday servicing one account and I would hate my life. Like I hated it. I hated the fact that I knew my friends and my family were home. Like you probably are right now. Some of you are probably working. Some of you are listening at your job <laughs> and you're cheating your boss. But I hated my life on these days. So every Saturday I go out and I take a drive. Now I'll cycle through both of my Corvettes because I got to keep them moving and get the battery life on them because I don't put a lot of miles on them. But I'm thinking out loud like I usually do on Saturdays where I reflect on when I was a younger man before I knew what I know now. And I was only making $315 a week. 50 of it was paid in under the table in cash for servicing that Saturday account. It would take me five hours to get up, drive out to Owings Mills from where I lived, pick the truck up, load up the things that I need to put in the vending machines and go service it, drive down to Fayette Street, then drive back up to Owings Mills, fuel the truck up, do the whole thing. And the whole time I'm looking at the clock thinking, I'm never gonna be able to see my girlfriend on time. She's gonna be upset. And the whole thing, every one of you young guys are thinking all the time. I, that was me, I did the same stuff. But while I was working and while I was driving to and from, I was looking for a way that I could come out of that. And I wanted to start my own vending business because he was underpaying me. He took advantage of me because his view was, and this is what happened. I was sitting in the, <clears throat> to the back of the warehouse after one of my uh, route days. And the guy's father who really owned the business came in and real, real snooty uh, Jewish man. Not that there's anything against Jews or anything like that, but th this guy was a hard liner. Just, you know, if you're not Jewish, then you're nobody. And he said, that, where's that young guy? You know, where'd you, where'd you find him at? Cause I was always wanting to learn how to fix the machines. Like I wanted to know everything. Cause my intentions were, I'm going to make my own vending business. I didn't want to be an employee. I knew that when I was younger, but I heard him say, where'd you, where'd you get him from? And he's like, uh, he, he applied and he was the one that kept calling him wanting the job. So, and he comes, he never misses a day, never misses a day. 
He's like, he looks like he's from Essex, Maryland. He goes, he is. He goes, yeah, you got to watch those guys from Essex. I literally wanted to crawl under a rock at that time. And that, that day struck a fire under my ass. I was like, you son of a bitch. Let me tell you what money making is all about. I'm going to find a way and I'm going to, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you sons of bitches what real money is. I crept underneath the dock door so that way they wouldn't hear me. Cause I think at the time, Glenn, who was the, the boss, the manager, the son of the owner, his dad, Marty, he, uh, he said something that day that literally got under my skin. And I was like, who the hell do you think you are? Now, let me paint a picture for you. This guy, he owned a lot of Section 8 real estate down in Baltimore. Made $30,000 a month in Section 8 income, living as a slumlord. Okay. His vending business, he had three routes. I ran one of them. My route did $147,000. And the, I guess that was, a, that was the middle route. The largest one was ran by his cousin. And there was another guy that ran a smaller route that I think he did like $100,000. And granted, the business was 50-50. You know, whatever you paid, you basically made that. And then you had to take costs of any kind of employee or whatever. And we just simply got really dirt income. That day, when I went home, I talked to my uncle. And this is why I believe college is a scam. Okay, and I say it all the time. College is an absolute friggin' scam. Uh, I went to school after high school did all the accelerated learning all the additional things and i was very high in math science and computer programming and operations i was into all that stuff when i was in sixth grade i was making my own programs making my own video games okay it is what it is now today all the programming languages that are available i don't i don't keep up with it because i'm not trying to be a computer programmer i'm not trying to be an employee and i could care less but that day when i came home and that employer of mine offended me without knowing that he offended me obviously i couldn't quit because i needed the money but i talked to my uncle who was a university of maryland graduate in finance and business management and i said to him i said you know what would you do if this happened and i explained what i just told you and he was like what did i ask like did you say anything to him i said no i was embarrassed like i mean i'm i'm from middle river which is across the street, basically, from Essex, which is down the street from Dundalk, Maryland. <laughs> okay. And they are like the armpits of Maryland. Okay. They, they, as far as like white trash, like that's, that's the areas where you see it from. And I can say that because I came up from it. So a lot of good people live in there and they still do. But generally, you know, you get the rough riders from that area. And some folks that are from this area, when they hear me talk, they can hear like when I say use, like a, that's a that's a slang that you can basically tell somebody's from, you know, Middle River, Essex, Dundalk, that vicinity. We all have that kind of vernacular, that little uh, accent. But my uncle told me, he said, you know, you just got to get yourself a good education and just pursue what you were in, in, in school for. I said, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to do it. I, when I got out, I couldn't get a job with all the programming. I couldn't do it. I studied COBOL, CICS, Pascal, BASIC, C++. And I didn't want to be in the video game making. Like, I didn't want to do that. At the time, the visibility, and I was really wrong. I didn't see that as a industry that would have been growing. Because I watched it transform so much from like Atari 25 or 2600 when I was a kid. We all have PlayStation and Xboxes now, but when I was a kid, it was Atari 2600. Like, if you weren't it, if you didn't have that. <laughs> okay. So I've watched all the transitions and I was like, you know, I just think it evolves too fast and I just don't see myself being able to do that. But I was wrong in that regard because if I would have gotten into game making, I probably would have done well. <clears throat> but, and I know this probably has nothing to do with trading. And some of you are like, man, get to the point. The point is, is, you all ask how I think and interpret and how I got to where I am and how do I get through all the, the struggles? Well, this is one of those struggles that lit a fire under my ass. A boss literally basically said that I was trash. Didn't say the words trash, but that's what it is.
So when I talked to my uncle that day when uh, I came home, because I actually lived with them, I rented a room, room and board, $50 a week. And I told him, I said, Uncle Stan, I like, I'm mad. Like, I'm pissed off at this guy. Like, I want to go back and tell him off. But if I do, he's going to fire me. He's like, well, the best way to, to live well is, I'm sorry, the best revenge is to live well. You know, just go and do something better for yourself. And then when it's time, leave. But I didn't have an answer for how to do that. Like, I didn't know what it is that I would be doing to make money. Not that I was making a lot of it under them, but I spent an average of 13 hours a day doing that garbage job and listening to his lies saying, I'm going to make you a route manager one day and you would be $500 a week. Now, $500 a week back then in 1990, what, two, 91? Uh, yeah, 91. I literally swallowed that hook, line, and sinker thinking $500. That's mad money. Like, that's crazy money back then. $500 is nothing. Like, my stop loss, <laughs> my stop loss per tick is like that now. So the bottom line is I was pissed off and I wanted to find a way. I wanted to find a way to get out of that situation. And my uncle's advice was go back to school and pursue more of the, the languages that are available today. Now, this is a guy who I love. He was a father figure in a period of my time of, of growing up. He let me move into his home and they, they treated me very good. But this is the same person as what I said, don't take life advice from people that have a lot of drama in their, their life. And there's, there's people out there that critique me very hard. And they assume the things I talk about and say aren't good advice. But if you look around, there's a lot of folks since I've been public teaching, they're showing the results. You know, they're doing those funded accounts. You know, they're, I'm, I'm seeing people getting paid not just the acceptance of these funded accounts. And I'm not going to sit here and rep anyone's company because I don't have any affiliation. And please, if you're part of those companies, don't reach out to me anymore because I'm not going to you know, rep you. I'm not, I don't do those things. Just like brokers, I don't rep a broker either. I'm not introducing broker. I'm not trying to get you to do anything except for invest in time with yourself and believe in yourself because I'm telling you right now, Going to college is the biggest fucking scam you'll ever do. And I don't care if you make money because you went to college. The world has changed. Look around. Look around. People have no idea what's about to come. They have no idea what's coming. I've been talking to my students, telling them, before Trump got elected, I said all of this stuff was coming. It's in video. It's documented period that things are coming you're not ready for your job is not guaranteed your boss thinks the same way about you like i just described my old boss when i was a young man they're not going to tell you because they can get a lot of trouble today where you know back then a lot of things you know you can get away with a lot of things back then but I was taking advice from a guy that went to college, graduated a very high GPA, business management, a math scholar, but he was managing a Kentucky Fried Chicken. KFC. Yeah. Here's my uncle, the guy I learned about trading from, who couldn't make money outside of the first initial plunge into it where he made money to, to buy a condominium down in Ocean City and sugar. And he told me when I was 15 years old and 16 years old, every Sunday at my grandmother's, the richest people in the world, Michael, trade futures and options, get yourself a good job, become an electronic tech technician, save up, invest, and live like the fat cats. <laughs> well, at 15 and 16, you know, hearing that, I'm interested in martial arts. <laughs> okay, I'm going to run my own martial arts school. I'm not interested in all that stuff. It sounds like the stock market. That's, that's that's over my pay grade as a kid. I'm not interested. I hadn't really worked yet. And then when I started working, I was thinking, this sucks. You know, first job was a dishwasher at Gerspec's grocery store. But I looked at my uncle that day and I told him, I said, can I, can I tell you something? And I want you to know that I'm saying this with love. And I just want to know things better. 
but how do you feel knowing that you wasted six years of your life in college and all the bullshit that you subscribed to and the books that you paid for all that prep work all that stress and crunching numbers all that stuff and you're working at kentucky fried chicken managing kids that don't want to come to work and then you got to stay and do their job you did all of that as a result of spending time and the money he paid out of his pocket folks he didn't have what is what that's it uh, financial aid again he didn't have those things he paid for it with his jobs and savings and money and he cut grass and that's what he does today he's a retired man he doesn't even trade and he's got his own little grass cutting business so he he puts a little bit of bread that and he's got a, a pension from Verizon where, where he re retired from but he was not successful as a trader he was not successful as a college graduate with ex ex exemplary marks in school like his grades were great and to talk to him he's a very intelligent guy very intelligent but down to earth too and I I love talking to him I don't talk to him as much anymore but that day when I asked him that it was like I crushed his soul and it was not my intention, folks. It was not. That, that was not my intention. But I, I wanted to know: Have you uh, have you observed? Have you noticed that you worked your ass off and you told me to do those things, and I did it? And guess what? Both of us are in the same position. We can't use the shit that we paid for in school. Nobody, nobody wants. Hang on, this guy's getting ready to try to. So, I asked the guy, my uncle rather, and I said, "Listen." Do you honestly believe that that was the best decision for you and I? Like, I took your advice. I listened. And nothing came from that. And the, the look in his eye was like, literally, like, man, it was noticeable to you. <laughs> I don't know if he was ignoring it, like, like the elephant in the room. But I know my aunt, who was married to him looked at him like you know he worked really hard and this is never talk about it you never could make it work he went on so many interviews so many interviews and they never hired him and i never got an interview not one time all of the resumes i put out and i had a better gpa than he did not one interview so i wasted my time i wasted my money in a field that was the future programming technology and information systems i wanted to be a systems analyst and guess what i was a vending machine operator i filled coffee machines and candy machines and soda machines and i could take them apart and put them back together i could tell you what's wrong with them without even being on that location but it didn't pay money unless i owned the route and then one day, while I was doing the vending route, the conclusion came to me that, you know, even if I have this vending route, if I have a route like this, that means I gotta hire somebody. Do I trust somebody to be able to take the cash out of the machine and bring all the money to me? Because I got robbed one time. They broke into the back of the truck. They literally pulled the safe that was bolted in the back of the uh, Isuzu truck. They ripped the whole safe off the back truck that was bolted empty ripped the whole entire thing out and when i came out of the the site to put the remainders in the stale stuff that i take out of the machines and i saw the door ripped off and the safe missing i was gutted i'm like the first thing it came to my mind was they're gonna think i did it that was exactly what i thought why did i think that why would i go to that conclusion immediately because of that piece of shit that you got to watch those guys from Essex. And I've been honest. I hadn't, I haven't even missed a day. <laughs> I've never missed a day. I came to work all the time. But these people broke into, stole that cash. And I literally was ashamed that it happened on my route. Like I could have somehow prevented it. I couldn't have. I was inside doing the, doing the service on the, on the machines. So I sat there for 10 minutes trying to figure out how am I going to work up the, the courage to call in and tell my boss that 
I just got robbed. Thankfully, not at gunpoint or anything like that. But I had to sit there and wrestle with, hey, this is what it feels like to be violated. I've never experienced something like that before. I've never had that moment where something was taken from me and it wasn't mine and that makes it even worse. But when I called in, when I called in to, to talk to the owner of the company, I said, um, I just got robbed. What? Yeah, I just got robbed. And he's like, are you okay? And that made me feel better that he was at least asking that. And I said, I'm fine. I just came out of the site with, with the site I was at. And I said, they tore the door off the back. So it was a roll-up door that's going to cost you money. And they ripped the entire safe off the floor. Like it's gone. Like it's completely gone. And he goes, did he have any video camera back there and like that? Any kind of guards? And I was like, there's nothing here, dude. Like, this is the site I'm at. And it was like a dilapidated old rubber hose making company. So it was an almost failing company. So there was not a lot of technology back then. And nobody was really worried about guarding a place like that. So apparently somebody followed me around, tracked me, and then figured that was the place they were going to do it. And it was. It was like the third stop away from my last of the day. So all the money that would have been there, you know, was theirs. Well, when I got back to the shop, the owner's son, Glenn, who I had an affinity for, even though his dad's a dick, I uh, I saw an entrepreneur magazine sitting on his desk. And I was looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, entrepreneur, remember that day when you said you were going to be a martial arts instructor, and you got all the credentials to do it, but you never did it. Here you are feeling vending machines, you just got robbed, and you feel like shit. So I picked it up and started thumbing through it. And I found things in the magazine that I liked, like they were like pictures of boats and stuff, yachts and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask him if I could take this home and borrow it. And I said, Glenn, do you mind if I borrow this? I'll bring it back tomorrow. It, it won't be messed up. He goes, no, you can have it. So I took the magazine home. And I went home, did my normal thing coming home, shower, work out, eat, sit around. And I started wanting to go to sleep. I grabbed the magazine. I was looking at it. And I thumbed through the back of it. And there was this little tiny little classified ad. It said, real money, real people. Call this 1-800 number and get free information. So I did. And then like a week, I got a little cassette tape. And obviously, many of the old people here, the old, old time students, they know that that was the Ken Roberts garbage course that ended up buying, that put me on the mailing list of Larry Williams stuff, the rest is drink. But when I started making money trading, I was at that vending company during that nine months of... So naturally, because I was looking for any way to get out of that lifestyle, having to work, and I wanted to be able to put the middle finger up into that guy's dad's face, which I never did that, folks. I'm glad I didn't, because I'd probably regret it today, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to do it, because I did. But I wanted to uh, escape so badly that there was a a snowstorm and I was expected to go to work that day and I was in bed with my girlfriend who I was engaged to at the time and I thought to myself I make way more money than I make in a month a day now and I'm looking at this girl who's not my wife it was a younger relationship I was a young guy but I'm looking at her and I'm thinking I want to marry this girl and I don't want to be doing what I'm doing. And she doesn't know what I'm doing. She thinks the only from the vending business. So when we go out to dinner and I'm taking her to a nice restaurant to try to impress her and her parents. That day, I just said, you know what? It's, I'm done. So we had pagers back. My boss was paging me. You know, and they call in, call in. Like, you know. So I finally clicked on that. I'm not coming in today. It's snowed and it's bad here. And he's like, well, shovel out. I said, shovel out. Now, this is the sun, the one I did like. I said, Glenn, I can't shovel the friggin' streets. Like, it's everywhere, not just around my car. And I had a Z20 back then. So, uh, you 
just don't do a Z28 in this kind of snow we have. So he says, well, if you don't come in, you don't have a job. I said, well, that just made it a lot easier because I'm never coming back now. See ya. And I didn't go pick up my check. It was four months before he mailed it to me. <laughs> uh, did it feel good to do it that day? Yes, because I didn't have a guilty conscience about it. That was the reason why I kept staying because I liked him. I liked him as a person, but that day it killed it for me, which is, I guess, you know, God's way of saying it's time to go. So he let him show his colors to me and I just rolled and I just did it the way I wanted to on my terms. They didn't they didn't say we don't need you any more trash from Essex. Then their business went under. These folks that had uh, Section 8 housing. They lost all their their housing because of reports about being slumlords. So all their wealth and things that made them feel rich and such, they don't have it anymore. No but I look at myself every Saturday and it sounds venomous the way I'm saying it now. It's only because I'm talking to you like you're in the car with me right now. And I'm reliving these painful emotional moments that were real. These are not made up things, folks. I garbage, okay, just like all of you do. I was not exempt from that. You hear me talk and it sounds like this guy was just pressed out of a mold. He never had any hardships. It was a silver spoon in his mouth. And this is, no, 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 no. And it's not because I'm lazy, because I'm not lazy. I'm a real person. I wonder these things. Just like you're going through your things right now. And you'll think about this conversation when you're older and you have more experience behind you. And then when you've succeeded, you'll say, you know what? I remember that time when I was out there driving around, I almost beat somebody's ass for almost running off a road. That day, he said some things that really resonated with me. And it made sense. At that time, later on, not so much meaningful to you right now because they're my experiences. Maybe you don't have the hardships that you live with. This is temporary. Don't let other people around you look down on you and make you think that that's where you're supposed to be. No. You are not where you are right now. You found me because you were supposed to find me. We crossed paths because you are expected to use what it is I'm teaching. You didn't find me by chance. Do I ever advertise? No. You ever seen any ads? Nope. No coupon codes, no special deals, no deadline. If you don't do it by this time, that's all garbage. That's people that need to sell. I don't need to sell shit. And when you taste what it is that I'm selling, it's real. And then when it's given to you for free, that's treasure. Look how many people are literally energized now. They're able to see it. And all it took for them is to literally engage. Take me for my word only on the basis of test and see if it's true. It costs you nothing but time. If I'm a fraud, if it doesn't work, you'll know right away. I didn't have that, folks. I didn't have those things. Hang on. I was trying to run him over in the uh, fire engine. See that? When's the last time your mentor took you on a road trip like this? <laughs> Almost had cops show up. So <laughs> when you go through these moments where you feel like you're not going to be able to do this, just know that I had those all the time. And I had good, well-meaning people around me and they didn't inspire me. In fact, they were weights around my neck. They kept me from being positive. I had to dig in deep on myself. And it was me basically going to war with that guy's perception of me. You gotta watch those guys from Essex, Maryland. Like I'm some freaking meth head selling crack on a corner somewhere. 
I was a model employee. Like that, like that's the guy you want that never misses a day, that works over and doesn't expect anything extra, and believes that in that in time that the employer will reward them for their loyalty and work ethic. And I was taken advantage of. But guess what? I'm not complaining about that. I'm glad it shaped me into who. That's who I was before I started working for them. My grandfather made that in me. So college is a fucking scam. It's a scam. You will not go to college now. Get a career making a high degree of income with a great degree of consistency and longevity because your business is not guaranteed to you.